Welcome everyone to One Strand's Fast Snapshot series. This week's session will be on RPI Binder, the SCORM module. My name is Tammy Holter and I'll be hosting the session today with, of course, Ms Rita Nye, who will be running through the SCORM module of RPI Binder. Hello, Rita. Hey, Tammy. Okay, the session today will of course run for approximately 15 minutes. These are snapshot sessions rather than our classic 45 minute to one hour long webinar session and designed to be more informative than our quick three minute videos that are up on YouTube, uh, providing a bit more depth on some of the angles that you might not get into unless you're in training. So yeah. they're uh, probably going to be great little uh, video series that uh, Bigger than the three minutes, not as big as the 45, um, but have some insightful tips uh, that you might want to reuse when you're uh, basically preparing to go through particular features. So let's kick off on this session. What are we covering today? So the, of course the purpose of the SCORM module is to develop training content by reusing authorised S1000D technical content. Yep and then outputting that to SCORM and in this particular instance it's going to be SCORM version 2004 4th edition. Correct. So um, once we get into the product demo what we'll be taking a look at is okay how do we combine that technical content so there's S1000D um, procedural data modules etc. Um, combine them with e-learning modules because of course we have that in S1000D. How do we apply SCORM player attributes, so some specific things, some settings that we'll want yeah. to put into Binder before we then output an actual SCORM PIF that can be used or played in a appropriate SCORM system. Correct. Or SCORM playing system. Yeah. It's like some sort of LMS. LMS, exactly. So on that note, let me hand over to you, Rita. Okay, so I've got Binder open. Uh, what we did was we made the decision that the best way to implement this was to put it into the binder interface. Yep. Purely because from a training point of view, people still want to stay with their time well held PDF environment. Mm -hmm. But what we did was we then went, okay, well, we, we want to be able to produce PDF, we want to be able to produce SCORM, we want to combine content. content. Yep. Let's produce everything inside Binder. And it makes sense, doesn't it? Because you can, you know, when you're building a book, you can drag and drop descriptive and procedural for your, yep. your, your um, maintenance type environment. So you're now adding your learning modules. You can produce your PDF and then you can go, okay, how do I need to change it up or what else am I adding um, and configuring ready for a SCORM? Absolutely. Yep. So it makes life that little bit easier mm -hmm. to be able to do this. So to create your training content. Yes. Okay, so obviously you're going to create your learning modules, um, which means you're going to be using the extra attributes for the learning, the learn event code and the learn code. Mm -hmm. So we'll then have that additional training content and you want that to be able to put that nice feel good information around the technical content. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I mean, even the names of the learning modules kind of make sense, don't they? Because really you kind of have this, what's the objective of the course, you know, goals, what we're going to achieve, then you get into the actual steps yes. or procedures of how to actually perform that function. Yep. And then there's often some wrap up, there might be some additional information after a procedure, like maybe a video or something that they might be including. You can do anything. Yeah. And then of course, You've also got that assessment criteria as well. Ah, which is often an important one for the yes. learning. So particularly on, online. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, so depending on what you're doing, you can develop a SCORM package that's just a pre-assessment. Mm -hmm. So you want to gauge the attendees' current knowledge. Yes. Um, then once they've done the pre-assessment, they can do the training. Yep. And then you can have post-assessment, which is reinforcing what they've just gone through and learnt into an assessment criteria. Nice. And so with the S1000D learning schema, you've got, from memory, there's five different uh, assessment criteria. Okay. So you've got your yes, no, slash, true, false. Yep. You've got single select, mm -hmm. so multi-choice, so a minimum of three choices, one being valid. Yep. You've got multi-select, which yep. is a minimum Mon of three questions, up to two or three choices. Answers. Yep. Uh, you've also got um, 
a drag and drop, so like a matching pattern. Oh, okay, so you drag it from here. <laughs> I think this one is this. Yeah. Correct, yep. so you've got that one. You've got your image assessment, so you can click onto like an area. A spot to yeah, area. so which part is the alternator, for instance, and you've got to click on the image yep. area. Yep. Actually, there is a sixth one, which is fill it yourself. Which makes it oh. very, very difficult. Ooh, harder to assess to do assessment if it's a on free text box. Yeah, because okay. you've literally got to try and write it in a way that some pattern matching sort of. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's a much harder one to do. Yeah. So again, you've got to make sure that the assessment functions you're choosing will work inside the LMS that you're playing with as That's well. That's right. So if you're delivering this to an end customer you know, A, what SCORM version are they working with, the LMS that they're using, does it even have the capability Correct. to match a free text box, etc. So all those things have to be taken into account. Absolutely. So you need to be aware of the, that particular criteria before you even go down the path of starting to create content. Okay. okay. So, and again, when we're starting to look at the creation of the content, um, version 4 was when the learning schema first came out. Yep, in S1000D. In S1000D. Okay. And then in version 4.1 they added more functionality. Yep. Uh, of which one of the ones that came out in 4.1 was you could set up almost like a question pool. Okay, nice. Yep. So you can have a um, an attribute of shuffle. Yes. Yep. And that means that for one question you might have five or six variations mm -hmm. of that question. Yep. And then the LMS will randomly select. And that's handy, particularly if you fail a test and you've got to reset it, you don't want them to get exactly the same, same questions. questions. Yep. But again, back to the LMS, does the LMS do that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you've got to understand the criteria. Mm -hmm. So what we do with Inside Binder is we basically want to build a book structure of that training material that we want to use. Yep. So what we did was we looked at it from the point of view of, okay, when you're starting to look at your training material in an online environment, you're looking at a HTML page. You don't want to set it up that your HTML page is miles it's long. Scrolling down, down, where down. The, it's, the student is just constantly doing this scrolling process. Mm -hmm. It's just an exhausting way for the student to learn. And it just doesn't give you a good feel. No. Not with the way... You know, it looks like old-fashioned content, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. So what we did was, of course, inside Binder, we've got chapters and sections. Yes. So if we add a chapter... Yep. And we can rename it if we want to. Yep. It's really up to whatever. So, so the concept of a chapter, chapter might become a topic, for instance, right Correct. in, in an <coughs> e-learning environment. Yep. Absolutely. So then once we've got that chapter, if I start to add data modules directly into that chapter, mm -hmm. when I produce that into a SCORM package, all those data modules will then become one page. Okay. Right so yeah. that's where you get that big scroll issue. Okay, so we, we probably need to sectionize the, yeah, so the modules in that chapter. When yeah. you're looking at your training material, you really want to be able to sit down and identify how do you want that content to flow. Or navigate. So yeah. that when a student logs into the system to look at the content, what do you want them to see? When do you want them to go to the next page yep. to be able to identify that structure? Mm -hmm. So what we did was we went, okay, so your chapter is your topic. Yep. Your section is, this is when we're going to force a page Next break. page, next page type concept Correct. for navigation. Yep. For pure navigation purposes only because, of course, there's no concept of a chapter section in an LMS environment. Mm -hmm. So what we do with that is we simply build these just to force the page break function. Mm -hmm. So what we so wherever that's logical, you're going to do it. Yep. Correct, yeah. It's just to give us that navigation. So yeah, that, more for online. Yeah. yeah. Because you want the, the attendees, the students, to actually be engaged with the information that we're looking at. You don't want them just to sit there going, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah roll yeah. down, roll down, roll okay. down. Yeah, yeah. So what we do is we build these sections and we're simply then going to just start to add the content Drag and drop. we'd normally do. So we're just using Binder. So I'm instantly seeing here, like, like you said earlier, um, we can take the same training content and we can put it into a PDF book as well. Um, of course, we probably wouldn't worry about the sections, right? If we were doing a PDF book, we could keep the <coughs> chapter structure but we wouldn't want sections. So we would save two different books. We'd have a SCORM book or SCORM training package versus a print publication training package. Yeah, or just simply have two different style sheets. 
I guess that's true as well, right? Yeah. Where, where it's inside a section, we don't care. Mm. You can literally just ignore the section portion. Yep. And just say in this chapter, these are all the. Nice. Okay, so you could do that as well, right? You've yep. got a, a different outlet. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So with this, so um, say we've got, and I'm just going to add in four sections. Yep. I'm just going to throw in some joyful bicycle content. Yep. How wonderful are the procedures to clean? Yeah, so we've um, got some specific sort of modules around the diesel engine and stuff, and then some bike stuff. Yep, and I'll just put in some good old procedures. Conclusion. So I've basically built a general topic, topic module. Yep. Now, it's very much up to how you want to build your SCORM package. Mm -hmm. You can have multiple topics okay, in, in the one SCORM package. Yep. And from that point, we would just add in another chapter. Yep. Add in more sections and yep. we just keep adding it in. Yep. So we can have as much as we need for that particular criteria. Mm -hmm. So hence the pre-assessment, yep. you could just have a chapter that has the assessment question, the assessment data module. Okay. Yep. Because remember when we're authoring the training content, yep. the assessment is going to be its own single data module. Of course, it makes sense. Yep. So we, we know which is going to be the assessment information. Yep. So you can have a pre-assessment yep. and you just have a chapter with a data module contained and you literally want them to go through all those questions. They're not going to get broken up into multiple pages. No. Because you're going to have one data module for it. Yeah. So you'd go through that process. So if you just wanted pre-assessment, you could do that. Yeah. If you wanted to have the assessment after all of the content. Yep. So you can see so this here. is almost like a review online thing and then yep. a separate topic if you wanted to go into for just the assessment. Yep. So what I've done with this particular batch here is I've put the assessment before the conclusion. Mm -hmm. So again, we're forcing them to go through. Depends what you're trying to achieve. Yep. yep. Or you could have, then have a topic that's the post-assessment. Mm -hmm. So you've got that flexibility. That's part of your lesson plan development. Yeah, yeah. You would go through and identify how do you want that to all fit together. Mm. And again, combined with, okay, so how is this going to work when it goes up to an LMS? So if we've got a topic, do we then order the topics and some only get released as instructors? But that's all LMS. It's the learning management side. Yes and no. So a combination. So if I wanted this, if I added a second chapter in here. Yep. Yeah and then broke that down into sections, yep. then we automatically put, at this point in time, for sequencing in. So that means that uh, from a student's point of view, they've got to finish Chapter 1 before, before they can go Chapter 2. Okay. So it's a double prong side of it. So you can collect a whole range of different SCORM packages and put them into a certificate yep. inside the LMS. Yep. And then that means that you can organise the order, order. Yep. that those those SCORM packages need to be completed in. Yep. But within the SCORM package... In one, we control it from here. We control it from here. Okay, so it depends how you're breaking it out. Absolutely. So, again, environmentally, we've got, to learn, we've got to know about, okay, what technical procedural content have we got, what learning content, lesson planning, and then where are we playing this? Because how we plan out and how we build each SCORM <laughs> PIF or PIFs is dependent potentially on what's going on, where we're Correct. placing it. Absolutely. Okay, so okay. good to know before we get going. Seems to be a general topic with it. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> with these snapshots, it's kind of environmental things you need to consider. Okay. Okay, so naming the book, all of that functionality is all still available. So stock standard. All yep. stock standard. There's nothing special about that at all. Now, you've mentioned, uh, you know, as a, um instructor, we're going to be doing specific um modules before and at the end, et cetera, like objectives and conclusions and assessment modules. Mm -hmm. So how would I write those? Because it's easy, the procedural bit's been written by the technical authors and it's authorised content, I'm good to use it. What, how do I author my content? With an S1000D authoring tool. Okay, because they're s 1000 they XML, so any XML authoring tool. So we, R4 Rider allows them to do yep. it if they want to use R4 Rider, like yep. the rest of the authors. Absolutely. Yep. And so it's a new way for an instructor to think. Mm -hmm. So it means moving them into that structured authoring environment. And combined with S1000D sort of rules, etc. Yep. But they'll get that benefits and, of course, the reuse of content, right? So authorised technical content. Absolutely. As soon as it's authorised over on the tech side of the house, they've got access to it and why rewrite it? Well, at this point in time, you think of the old ways that go. You've got tech writing in one corner and training, training. in the other and they don't... Those writing separate content. Correct. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, the benefit of this is that by reusing that technical content that the tech writers have written and using a SCORM environment, the presentation can be consistent across both their training mm. and their production environment. Oh, and that's, I mean, that's a big one, right, is even just um, for students to start or, you know, or operators, maintainers to actually be exposed to a style of information in the training and learning environment and then seeing it similar like over in an IETP, you know, when they Absolutely. actually get on the maintenance floor, it just makes so much sense, doesn't it? That consistent style um, and sort of capability that people have come to expect. Yep. So, totally. okay, well, let's see. Okay, so that's We've got our content there. Now what? Okay. <laughs> now what we need to do is we need, because the LMS is really dumb. Mm -hmm. If the information's not inside the SCORM package, the LMS doesn't do anything. know much about yep. it. So there's three core pieces of information that the LMS needs to know. The first one is to be deemed competent or to be deemed passed, what do they need to achieve as a pass value? Mm -hmm. How long do they have in hours and minutes? Okay, that makes sense because you can't have them sitting there for hours and hours. Yep. Yeah, you need to have at some point in time that SCORM package has got to die. Yeah. They've expanded, you know, same as any sort of exam. You go into an exam, yeah. you would have an hour and a half to complete the work. Yeah. You don't have five hours to sit there and muddle along. Yeah. You've got an hour and a half. Yeah. They've probably got some issues of this topic if they're going to sit there for that long. Correct. So we need to do the same so thing. So the same thing's here. Yeah. So to do that, what we've got is inside Binder, we can add custom attributes, mm -hmm. which is one area that not a lot of people tend to use. Okay. And you're not just restricted to using this for a SCORM package. This can be used for any PDF mm -hmm. structure. If you want to add some extra. Yep. Yep. So we add a custom attribute and we've got some very specific ways to write this content. So the first one is we need to set in a pass value. Okay. What do they need to achieve as a minimum to be deemed competent for that content. Okay, so we're looking at a topic here and we want to know okay. is there a pass so value? Right. The attribute is pass, pass value. value. Very specific, it's got to be with a capital P and a capital V. Okay, so again, this is SCORM things, these are SCORM attributes. Well, no, these, at these attributes, they're SCORM required, yep. but as to their presentation of it, SCORM doesn't comply with the control that. Yeah. We've made the decision that we've fit inside Binder that we're going to use a camel case okay. just to help us identify the information. Right. Okay, so we set in a pass value and or the attribute and now we've got to set the value for it. Mm -hmm. So this is back to your learning plan yep. as to how much do they need to achieve. Yep. So if you're is it a nice, eighty percent pass if it's a safety type topic. Yep. I was going to say if you're a nice gener generous instructor you might set it to a fifty percent pass. Depends the topic. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a really High level, massive, must be compulsory. Yeah, it might be, be a ninety percent pass. Yep. Yep. I'm going to be nice and generous, and I'm just going to set mine to fifty. Good old fifty. Yeah, I'm probably. a lovely fifty percent <laughs> person. And I just click add, mm -hmm. and then I've got to set my durations. Okay, and it's duration so hours. Yep, and, and duration minutes. minutes. Okay, so two separate pieces. Correct. So we've got duration hours, and it's let's one say one hour Yep. So let's so say, we'll one. say one. Yep. And then we set minutes. Mm -hmm. And again, minutes, you're looking between 1 and what, 59. 0 and 59. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to be set, generous and say that it, they should only have an one hour. One hour. Okay. Okay. So when I've done that, now when I click onto the chapter, down in my status bar, yep, down the bottom it there. tells me what values I've set. Okay, nice. So, so you're I setting can, them, you can see them. Yep. I can see them. And... That's as hard as it gets from that point of view. Okay. You then select your style sheet. Mm-hmm. Which we can look into the CSDB for the style sheet, right? Correct. Yep. And at this point in time, if we wanted to, we could then say that book. Mm-hmm. Because as you we create, probably rerun them again and again. Yep. yep. Like anything else. Anything else that you would do. Yep. I'm not going to bother saving this at this point in time. And you can see here I've got a create score button. Mm-hmm. And all I do is click on to create score. And what that does is it puts everything together into my final SCORM output. Mm -hmm. And a SCORM output is a PIF. Yep. Which is just a glorified zip file. Zip file. Yeah, it's a special name they gave it. Yep. Yep. It's a SCORM PIF. Yeah. But it's just a zip file. Yeah. There we go. It's now been completed. Let's and if take I a open look it, it. Yep. 
And as I said, it's a glorified zip, zip file. Yeah. That's all that it is. Okay, so we're just playing catch up with you. Hold on a second. So yep. we haven't made it to the output folder yet. <coughs> okay, yep, we're in the zip folder. Okay, so there's my zip. Mm -hmm. If I just, I'm just going to create a folder. If I double click onto this, here is the content of my SCORM package. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the advantages we've got with our, the way we've done ours, I can grab this and basically I've unzipped it and I'm pasting it into a folder. Okay, yep. And if I go into my chapter one, you can see here we've created all of our individual HTML Those pages. Those pages, could you put them in separate sections? Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. So they've actually triggered to create New page. That. Yep. <coughs> what I can do is I can actually double click onto the launch page. Yep. I'm going to get an error message. Because it can't assess anything, right? So there's no actual well, no. intelligent learning system. The best thing is it says I can't find the LMS. Yep. So therefore it's telling you that the results Nothing's aren't going to be, be recorded. recorded. And that's fine. Yeah, we just want to test it. But we can literally open up mm -hmm. the LMS or the SCORM package. Yep. And we can navigate through. So you can see it's a nice short page. Yep. It's got a next page function. We can then go to next. And, and we finish. Can, yep. So we can continue to navigate through this. Yep. And we can test it without actually having to push it up to an LMS. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a lot of power yep. with what you can do with it. Mm. And you can see at the top here. It's actually ah, doing it's a countdown. Doing the countdown. Well. Okay. So it's actually going to monitor. So if I left that open, mm -hmm. you'd run out of time. I'd eventually run out of time. Yeah. So yeah. So that's as hard as it is to actually produce a scorn PDF. It's a click the button. <laughs> so yeah. So it means that we can easily create our scorn packages. Yep. One of the advantages of producing scorn packages through Binder is that we can also incorporate those scorn packages inside my ATP. Yes, of course, which we call just-in-time time training. training. So we have, um, in R4i Viewer, we've got the various tabs yes. with features, and one of those tabs which you can enable if you want to when you generate an IETP is learning right. content. Yep. And so, yes, so we get a and, double layer. And, of, of course, the only difference is uh, because it's not an LMS, the IETP Viewer is not an LMS, you can't do any monitoring of assessments. Correct. But whatever is in that, training package they can go through and it's really like we like we've named it it's just in time it's kind of review or refresher of absolutely training content and so, yeah. remembering stuff before you do any maintenance see so, yeah so you get a double pronged benefit yeah yeah of being score. able to reuse it yeah. excellent so you can have it in both sides wonderful okay well thank you for that Rita I'm just going to go back to um, sharing my screen and uh, that was of course part three of our snapshot series. The details for Rita and I, if you have any questions, um, are available on the screen there. That was our Fry Binder SCORM module. And next week's session will be on RFRI viewers, more unusual features that some customers may not be ever, may not be aware are available to them. So we're going to take a look at some of the more unusual RFRI viewer IETP features. So we look forward to seeing everyone in that session. Thank you, and we'll be talking to you again very soon.